Hello and welcome to episode three of the TV and Film Review podcast. I'm your host today, David McGregor. It's a bit of a different host. We normally have Stuart Scott in, who's not here this week, so I'm taking over the hosting duties. Um, we also have a fresh group of uh, of, of budding TV writers with us, um, so I'm going to introduce them. Um, first off, we have, um, he's a bit of a superhero guru, he uh, likes his comic books, and he loves his wrestling, so don't pile drive him. Hit him up on Twitter at Forehead7, it's Stuart Ross. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Good. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. It was, it was pretty good, I thought. It was pretty good. Um, we also have, um, start spreading the news, all the way from New York, New York, it's not Frank Sinatra. You can hit her up on Twitter, it's at Molly Rocket, it's Molly Freeman. Hello. Hi, guys. And last but not least, uh, we have a special guest with us. He used to write for our site until he got bored and ditched us. Um, we love him. Um, so he's back with us. He's our bro... He's our brawn to our Tyrion. Hit him up on Twitter. Follow him. He's at RobbieCool89. It's RobbieCool. Hey, doing, guys? Good to be back. Good. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you haven't missed us too much, have you? Um, a little bit, to be fair. You always miss it once you've uh, once it's gone. Good. Um, so, episode three. We've got a few things to run through today. We're going to be um, talking a bit about what we've watched this week in TV and film. I'm going to be hitting on some of the pilot season and talking about some of the upcoming shows uh, that we're going to be seeing over the next year, possibly. Um, Stuart's here to talk about um, what's coming up this year in superhero, uh, superhero land and comic book world. And uh, we're also going to be touching on TV and film adaptations at the end. So, without further ado, who wants to start off telling us about what they've watched this week in TV and film? Let's go to Stuart. All right. Well, uh, my TV schedule has has been kind of interrupted this week. I, th- I don't know. Is it is it the Winter Olympics? Is that causing like yeah. shows to to not be on? It's the Olympics. Because all oh, right, and also a couple of finished like American Horror Story finished last week, so that wasn't obviously on this week. Community and wasn't on. And The Mentalist. I don't know what's going on with The Mentalist. They've they came back this year and they've had like two episodes at the start of, of January, and then it's not been on, and then it's going to be on in March. But pff, I don't know what's going on with that but this week I've had Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came back again for a week and then it's away for like two weeks or something really? This, uh, yeah it's, it's a bit of a crazy schedule and I mean this must um, drive you mad Molly uh, being based in the US just shows getting cut all over the place yeah one of my best friends actually will text me to ask when her favourite shows are on because I'm usually the only person that knows yeah I mean it, it's not something that really happens um, here much in the UK Certainly not to the extent. I think that's one of the reasons shows initially took such a huge break. You know, we would often be, you know, months and months behind for shows so that they could gather up all the episodes in a one and just run them all. Yeah, um, well, it, I, it, I would prefer that, but, yeah. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't take much. I, I don't think, actually, I think it takes quite a lot to um, to stop the TV schedules here. I think they, they, they stop once a year for the tennis. Wimbledon, am I right mm-hmm. thinking, some of, some of the shows? Um, I know yeah. some of the soap operas and things like that stop um, big sporting events, but not a lot. Uh, sorry, Stuart, I've interrupted there. Uh, no, that's all right. What else have you been watching? Uh, I think the only other thing would be How I Met Your Mother, which I'm kind of enjoying it. I've, it's got less funny for the past this season than maybe the last season, as they're but they're trying to they're pushing towards the end, so I can I can understand that and. It looks it's, it's it's definitely coming to a conclusion. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm watching close. it sheer go- force of all right now just because it's that close to the <laughs> end. I think I've came so far now. I may as well just see how it finishes and that be that. <laughs> I think that's everyone's mentality. We don't really care too much anymore. We just want to finish it. Yeah, just get over and done with. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not up to date with it yet. I've only watched the first couple of episodes of the uh, final season. How's the uh, mother character getting along? Yeah, yeah she's. No, you go short. Oh, she's 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 been in it a few times. She's she, I like her, but we've not really seen like too much of her. She's just kind of coming in and out of the wedding like scenarios at the moment. Yeah. And just kind of fitting in, interacting with people and whatnot. Yeah, I think um, Robin's the only person she's not actually directly interacted with, other than obviously Ted. But, um, they had like a whole episode dedicated towards her, like how your mother met me. Which, to be fair, was it was quite a yeah, good episode. Yeah, that was a good episode. It just it felt like they could have used her so much more than just the one episode. 
because it just felt like they were just cramming it all into it. It was really urgent and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think it would have been better if they had done ha- like half of the season focused on the mother. Definitely. Yeah. Um, have you watched any films this week, Stuart? Uh, I don't think. Oh, I watched uh, Caught Lone Survivor at the the start of the week, which you you could read the review on. Uh, I it it wasn't great. <laughs> it's I, I, yeah, I just didn't really like. It. It's too like too patriotic and <laughs> like pro American. I don't I don't mean offense at this to Molly, but it's no, it's okay. It's, it's really I, as somebody that that is that is, it isn't directed that it's, it's it was quite difficult to watch at times. See, I, I disagree. I, I watched Lone Survivor. I thought it was great. It was one of my favourite films of the year so far. Well, you know, 2013. And what? what? <laughs> what? Okay. I thought oh, I find that difficult, but each to their own. I suppose. Do you know, I, I, for, for for whatever reason, I just really enjoyed it. I thought there was some brutal scenes in there. I just, I was, I was captivated for the whole thing. I just was fully engrossed, especially from the moment when they, you know, without getting any spoilers here, but. From from the moment they get sort of caught, um, and you know they start getting surrounded, you know, so you, you're what twenty minutes into the film. From, from, yeah. from then on, I, th- I thought it was great. I thought it was a great watch. Um, and and I've, I think I, it was... I've seen very mixed reviews on it. I've seen some people saying that they absolutely love it, and like yourself, some people who just um, don't get it. I don't know what kind of reception it's been getting over in the states though. It seems to have scored a seven point nine on um, IMDb, which seems to indicate that's usually quite a good score in that terms. Yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw the IMDb score and I was horrified because <laughs> so, some of the films that it's pretty close to, and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe we'll have to take that with a pinch of salt from now on. Yeah. But I think I think the action was all right. I'm not a huge action fan, so I, it's not my genre. Nor and also with war films as well, I'm not a huge fan of war films. But I like, it just felt quite samey to me. There's a lot, like it's just like shooting, and there's nothing really new about it. Which is what I like to see in films. So, like as I said in the review, like Zero Dark Thirty, that's that's a, I I really enjoyed that because it's it shows a different side. It's not all the Americans versus the Taliban. It's not pure good versus pure evil. There's the Americans are torturing the prisoners of war and whatnot, and it just shows a, a different side to the dynamic, which I like to see in films. You put that very nicely. Thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, is that what you've been watching this week? Yeah, that's all. That's all. Uh, Molly, do you want to take us through what you've been watching? Sure. Um, I've been watching the uh, U.S. version of Shameless. I don't know if you guys have checked out either the U.K. or the U.S. version of that. I've never seen it personally. No, me neither. Okay, okay, well, I love it. Um, <laughs> uh, I also watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this week. I was not impressed by it, though. I mean, the show overall has kind of been eh. It's not yeah, I, I, I very much felt the same way. I was really buzzing for it, and uh, you know, and I think as a procedural sort of case of the week show, it, it, it does it does an okay job. Uh, I would have li- I would like it to sort of tie in with the uh, the overall Avengers theme a bit more. I know they did one episode which was the aftermath of uh, Thor, yeah, the, se- the second Thor film, which I quite liked. But yeah, it's I find it very meh. I, I'm I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, I've been... Helix is one of my new favorite shows, the sci-fi uh, outbreak type show. Have any of you started watching that? Because you should. Well, yeah, I, I've got a bone to pick with you about that, Molly. I, re- I read your review on the website. I was so pumped for it. I thought, oh, wow, really great review. I'm going to have to check this out. Watched it, and I got bored by the second episode. Okay, fair. It's It's pretty slow for, like, the first three episodes, but I think they're on episode five or six now mm-hmm. and it's picked up a lot it's yeah, s- sell it to us again all right well i mean yeah in the first three episodes it's mostly like no one really knows what's going on there's a lot of lying going on but towards the third or the fourth episode is when like people start really getting violent i guess um like the virus is getting insane and everyone's just, I don't know, it, it gets a lot crazier. I love it. It's definitely one of my favorite shows of 2014. Oh, very good. Uh, yeah, I mean, sci-fi is not, it's not my genre, really, so I, I never expected to, to overly love it. Um, I'll, you know, I'll maybe check it out again. I, I assume it's um, pretty much a dead cert for a second season. Uh, 
I'm not entirely sure. I don't think they've been greenlit for a second season yet, but I'm hoping they do. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I also have been watching Black Sails, which the new Star series about pirates. That's right. What did you think? I watched the pilot episode and quite enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, the third episode aired last night here, and it was fantastic. It's getting it's getting better and better, and that one definitely already has a second season, so I think it's going to get a lot better. We were doing um, pirate impressions last week <laughs> on the podcast. Can you do us a pirate impression, Molly? Give us oh, your best. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, I generally hate pirates, so I'm actually really surprised that I like <laughs> Black Sails. Yeah, I've seen a lot of pirate things recently, and I wasn't even a fan of the Pirates of the Caribbean film, but I thought this was, I thought this was pretty good. Um, it was, it was a lot of fun. Certainly, the first episode uh, that I watched, I liked a lot of the characters, even though I, I wasn't familiar with a lot of the cast. Not a lot of them had been in things that I'd watched previously, so it was, it was quite refreshing. Yeah. Um, good. Um, right, I'll, I'll go up next then with what I've been uh, watching this week. There's been um, a number of shows that I've been trying to catch up on. I've, I've started to get quite a bit behind. Uh, Banshee was one of them on Cinemax, um, which I, I've really been enjoying season two, even more so than season one. I just think it's a, a really enjoyable, refreshing watch. You don't have to think too much about it. And, and I really enjoy the characters. I know, Robbie, you watched season one, didn't you? Yeah, I'm up to date as well. Like you said, um, I totally agree. Just... You just, you just get to switch off to it, it's everything I enjoy in a TV show, just switched off mindless violence sometimes, but even then they've got they've brought the um, the Indians and the Amish kind of a bit of um, tension between each other as well, which has kind of added another dimension, rather than That's just right. over the rabbit. That's right, they have a lot of, um, they have a lot of evil characters in the show, you know, a lot of bad characters, I suppose even um, the lead, the, all the police force is corrupt as well, you know, yeah. they're always sort of up it. yeah, they have all these um, evil sort of um, groups of people who are always going against each other, which I, which I think is quite, which I think is quite good, it always creates a bit of uh, good drama that. Definitely. Um, apart from my regular sitcoms I've been catching up on, which some of them were on this week, uh, Trophy Wife was on, there was a new episode of Goldbergs and Mom, uh, they were all fine, nothing noteworthy there. Um, Rain, I know this is one of your shows, Molly. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I've been catching up on this, and um, I'm, I think, episode six or seven. And I will start off by saying this, for, for anyone who's not seen it, this is the, it's on the CW in the States. It's about Mary Queen of Scots. It stars Adelaide Kane, a um, bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. It's been it's been doing okay, I think, in the ratings. Um, I, I you know Liam was telling us last week that it's going to be between that and the Tomorrow People. It looks likely for the um, for the renewal. However, I, I just wanted to start off and say that I do enjoy the show. It, it you know it's it's quite fun, and if you just sort of sit back and take it as it is, I think it's I think it's a good watch. Yeah. I think if you try to analyse it a bit too much or <laughs> uh, go to reality, remembering, you know, obviously we've got three um, three Scotsmen here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's I, I touched on it last week with some of the some of the accents are, are very confusing as a Scotsman and trying to work out who's who initially. But I, I do you know what I think it's quite a fun watch and you're obviously a massive fan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I can't even explain how much I love this show. I I mean, it's definitely not historically accurate, and I don't think that they are really trying to make it historically accurate, because once you get more into the, like, the more recent episodes are completely deviating from history. And I think that's one of the most fun parts about it, is that they're just like, we don't give a shit about history. We're just going to do whatever we want. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I, as you say, one, once you sort of look past the, the fact that they're not going to be accurate with it, then I, I think it. I think it's quite a fun watch. I think it's um, hits a demographic pretty well. Yeah. And, um, and and do you know what? There's a lot of there's a lot of likable characters in it. Um, mm-hmm. I know I like a lot of the uh, ladies' maids. Um, yeah. You know, I like I like to see what they're getting up to. Um, I mean, there there is some ridiculous things in it. I have to say, there's. Um, I, I, one of the episodes, I think it was one of the earlier ones, three or four, um, and you guys will like this, right? You have Mary Queen of Scots, and she's playing football. Okay, and this is this is soccer for anyone in the US. Mm-hmm. She balloons the football into the tree. She climbs a tree to get the football, falls out of the tree onto the handsome 
Prince of Portugal. It's just it happens ridiculous. To be there. It just happens to be there. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's some of the stuff is is, is utterly ridiculous. Um, but do you know what? It, it you know as Molly was saying, it, it's pretty fun. Um, it's not been picked up yet in the UK. No one's decided to take a chance on it yet. Um, yeah, it's pretty heavily <laughs> aimed at Americans because I mean we weren't taught any of this history in school. At least I wasn't. So I think they sort of bank on that fact. Yeah. Um, what else have I been watching? The only other things of note that I've been watching this week is I know that Amazon, you may have seen, released some pilot episodes this week. For those of you not familiar, they did this last year. They um, showed, I think it was um, five or six different pilot episodes um, free onto their Amazon Prime, I believe it's called. Amazon Prime or Amazon and its love film over here in the UK. They show six pilot episodes and people get to rate them, comment on them, and then whichever ones are um, received most positively, they take these to full series. And I believe they did that with two of their shows last year. This year they've introduced, I think there's five of them, um, five new shows, certainly aimed at adults anyway. There's a lot of cartoon and um, animated stuff for kids. Um, And I've watched two of them so far. Um, one of them has been getting panned by the critics pretty heavily, and that is The After. Now, this is a show um, that I actually pretty enjoyed. I thought it was, I thought it was good. It, I, I was amazed. I was, I'd, I'd seen all the critical feedback beforehand. We get absolutely slated. Um, but when I watched it, I wanted to watch more. I thought it was good. I'd be quite happy to see it go to series. Um, it's a, uh, it's by Chris Carter. His first TV show. Um, in about 10 years or something, you know, the guy from the X-Files. And it's about a post-apocalyptic um, world. I'm assuming it looks as if there's going to be some aliens involved. Um, there's, you know, the cast are fine. It's it, it was quite suspenseful, I thought, and I thought it was pretty good. I'm looking forward to seeing if they renew that. Possibly not, given the, the slamming it's received. And um, the only other one of those pilots that I've caught so far is one called Transparent, which is... Uh, half hour comedy it almost feels like a it's not a sitcom it almost feels like an indie film but in a sort of comedy setting for half an hour um and again it was fine it seems to be the one that's um picking up most of the critical acclaim from all the amazon pilots so far but it was fine and oh should mention as well i've also watched I watched one film this week which was her with Joaquin Phoenix and Amy Adams and Scarlett Johansson. Have any of you seen that? Yeah, I have. I've not seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I don't think it comes out until Friday for us here. It comes out on Valentine's Day. But, I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's a really interesting concept and it's, it's getting a lot, of, a lot of good reviews and whatnot. Yeah, I think it's I think it's very worthy of its award for Best Picture at the Oscars. It's... Um, you know, it's it's a great story more than anything. I mean, yeah, Wacken Phoenix is great. Amy Adams is fine. I don't think her character really needs to be in it, to be honest. Um, you know, she has a, a supporting role that I think is a bit needless. But it's more about the story and this love story that you have between um, Wacken Phoenix's character and his operating system. And and maybe it's just me that I, this may, might make me sound a little weird. But it actually, when you're watching it, it's quite frightening about how real something like this could become in the future. And um, I know, I know I'll, I'll chat to you about it later, Stuart, when uh, when you go and see it. But I think it's I think it's pretty good. Are you picking up the review for that? Uh, no, I'm on Dallas Buyers Club this this month, uh, so I don't think. Another great watch. I, I'm not sure. Great watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I'll be probably seeing that tomorrow. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah that's I'm I'm excited for that one. Good. Uh, but that's all I've been watching this week. Um, so, Robbie, what have you been watching? Um, seeing as though you mentioned the uh, Dallas Buyers Club, I'll mention what uh, Matthew McConaughey's been on TV, True Detective. Have any of you been watching that? Actually, I caught the pilot of that this week. I forgot, forgot to mention that. But yeah, I caught the pilot and yeah, I enjoyed that. I've, yeah, I, I, catch I saw the first two episodes. I uh, really enjoyed it. I haven't been able to catch up any further with it, but certainly one I'm going to be watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, about three episodes in, but... Um, I have to admit, it's, it's not even so much that I care about what happens in the story. I just really love watching the two main characters work off each other. Um, most of the time, Matthew McConaughey just he keeps it really simple. And because of that, it's really effective just watching him go through some big philosophical speech. And yeah, just absolutely loving what I've seen in it so far. And uh, looking forward to the rest of it. 
but um, even more so, because this is only going to be over eight episodes as well, they seem to be taking the American Horror Story route, where they just do like something different every season and then move on to an our story. That's right. That that was one of the things that actually concerned me a little bit. I'm right, so I'm already thinking next season they're not going to have Woody Harrelson or Matthew McConaughey. Correct. Yes, they're going to bring in two other actors, and I think yeah, the two of them are quite happy because they're, they're like good friends apparently outside it, and they get the chance to work together. I think they just grab the chance of both hands. Um, most TV shows they have like a really good start, and in most cases an endless middle. So for this. Just get the story told, move on, and tell another interesting one. Um, also, I've been watching Justified. Don't know if any of you've watched that, but this week was a it was an absolutely brilliant episode. Just so much going on, so many sudden deaths been brought out of nowhere. It was just superb. Any of you watching that? No, I haven't seen it. I'm already thinking it's in its final season. No, it's got one more season next one year. One more, one more. Okay. Yeah, um, quite a lot of good TV shows moving out the way next year I think it is, or this year as well. It's quite painful to see Justified, Sons of Anarchy, Boardwalk Empire, The Newsroom. Yeah. It's just not fair. I know, there's a lot of them. Um, in terms of other TV shows, um, I've still been watching Arrow. Um, don't know if you guys have been keeping up with that or anything. I've been um, keeping up with that. How are you finding it, Molly? I love it. <laughs> um, yeah. I like it better than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think it's doing the whole comic book adaptation on TV a lot better. Definitely, I totally agree. My only problem is, I'd say, is um, I don't think it's really been as good as it has been since the Flash double episode, in my opinion. It just um, it just feels like there's been kind of a couple of fillers been put in of late. And, I mean, it's good that we've seen Deathstroke reappear as well into the fold, which is good, but I, just, I don't know what's going on in the island anymore. It just seems like highly dragged out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Arrow's one of those shows I that I it is it's seldom that this happens, but I really regret dropping this from my schedule. I watched season one and I enjoyed it, but I thought it was a bit ridiculous sometimes. Yeah. But I decided to ditch it, and my girlfriend's been watching it and still watches it every week, so she's right up to date. So I catch her watching it, and then all the time I'm asking her, "Who's that? What happened there? What happened there?" <laughs> and I'm gonna have to get back into it because yeah. it looks like it's doing really well. No, the yeah. first half of season two has been brilliant. You actually like this, your um, Katie Lopes with Death Valley. She's actually in it now. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, she's playing. Um, <laughs> she's playing Black Canary in it now. Oh nice. Aye, can't complain about that. I don't know if you um, saw the Brooklyn Nine Nine and the New Girl Super Bowl episodes as well. Um, I thought no, they no, were. I didn't catch them. They were absolutely brilliant in my opinion. Um, it was just Terry Crews seems to be getting more time on the show, and he's just living off it. To be perfectly honest. Just the opening scene where they were playing football against the fire department. It was just him, like, just destroying people left, right and centre. In just best comic fashion you could ask for. And then, um, New Girl was quite refreshing to actually still have a good episode because they've been kind of tailing off this season. They've been, like, the end of season two, but all the way around up, up to it, I thought it was probably, at its peak, probably the best comedy on it at that time. But since, like, Nick and Jess have now, like, been in their own official way in their relationship now, it just... They seem like they're, they're stagnating a little bit, if anything. Yeah. Spoilers here, by the way, for anyone um, <laughs> anyone Sorry, listening guys. not not in the US. Um, Nick and Jess uh, become a couple, I'm assuming. Uh, I'm not up to, I'm not up to date was... with it, but I think everyone saw that coming anyway. Yeah, I don't even watch it, and I knew that would happen eventually. <laughs> um, also, um, I finished off Parks... I'm up to date with Parks and Rec now as well, finally. Um, two big characters are um, apparently just left and out. I won't reveal who they are. For anybody, it's not actually up to date, but um, it's going to be interesting to see um, where they go from there, to be frank, because they are pretty pivotal characters, in fairness, but it might give the other main characters more of a chance to shine. I mean, I think, Molly, you watch Parks and Rec, don't you? Yeah, I haven't seen the most recent episode, which is the one where the two characters leave, but I've been caught up until then, and I'm more worried about season seven because of Chris Pratt being cast in Jurassic World. Yeah, Have you heard definitely. About that? Uh, yeah, because he was absent for the first couple episodes of this season because he yeah. was filming Guardians of the Galaxy. Definitely, and I think he's um, also the Lego movie apparently getting a sequel in production now as well. I think that's definitely really? moving forward already. Yeah, that's right. I saw that today. It's already got a sequel. That doesn't surprise me at all. Other than that, the TV, I think that's probably the main highlights. Maybe um, Archer as well, which has changed up quite a bit for season five. They've now, um, spoilers, they've moved away from like where they are at the moment to something completely different and you can see that it's 
changed things up big time there. I know Stubo was talking about it last week, or the week before I think it was, but for me okay. I thought it was pretty superb, to be fair for what I've seen of it. Good, good. That's about it for TV, why for me? Okie doke. Um, moving on, what we'll do, I'm going to run through the pilot season, which is well underway, um, which is when all the networks, um, they've got all these pilots that they have they want to put to screen, they're all starting to do their casting. Um, some of them have already been picked up to series um, and are just bringing in the rest of the cast. Some of them are um, are just be going to the networks as a pilot episode to see how they perform. Now, there's absolutely loads of these. There's there's literally, There must be about... 200 pilots in the works <laughs> over all the over all the sort of cable networks all the um all the different stations it just seems so, like more and more every year isn't it yeah every year more and more and since you've got now netflix and amazon um various other um companies um, in production now of these things there, there's just so many so what i've done is I've had a look through them all i've cut down into a top 10 list of ones that i'm looking forward to so i'll run through them um, and I will come to you for thoughts on each one on who I think is best placed to comment um, and then I'm going to run through a few of the other ones that I haven't um, that I haven't that I've picked out for various other reasons and you'll see why so on that note the 10th show that I'm most looking forward to so I'll go from 10 to 1 is a show that's coming on to the CW called I Zombie <laughs> right Right. I don't know if you've I don't know if you've uh, heard about this yet, right? And 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 I've picked this. There's been no casting. This is the only show that I've picked where there's been no casting so far. And I'm only going from the show's official premise here. And I'm going to read it out to you because I think it's um, <laughs> I <laughs> I think it's a bit worrying, but I, you know it, it sounds fun. So you have a medical student who's turned into a zombie. They take a job in the morgue to gain access to brains that they have to eat to maintain their humanity. But with each brain the zombie eats, they inherit the corpse's memories and then use those memories to solve crimes. Stuart, (laughs) Stuart, you like zombies. Your thoughts, please. Yeah, yeah, it just sounds ridiculous. (laughs) It sounds like kind of like that Warm Bodies film that came out last year, or maybe the year before, where they like ingest brains and take their memories but they're still kind of sort of human and i mean it's, it sounds funny like if they made it a comedy like i, w- I would i think it well might that, work, that's but... the only thing it's on the cw so it's unlikely to be a comedy it's probably going to be aimed at teens um, if it's sort of serious then i don't i don't see how that can work <laughs> yeah no no how, thanks how are they going to put in their cw love triangles with this <laughs> well they're very true very true no, <laughs> not gonna have a love triangle in there are you I think they are. They'll force it in. Yeah, <laughs> CW, they'll find a way. They always find a way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number nine on my list is a show called Open. And this is a show that's coming to you from the USA Network. It's by Ryan Murphy, who's obviously behind uh, Glee. Um, we've got... It's basically... it's The, the tagline for it, it, it's kept it pretty simple at the moment. It's basically an exploration of human sexuality and relationships... Um, the cast actually looks pretty good. Um, we've got um, Scott Speedman in it, who's starring, who's recently been in Last Resort. He was also in the um, romance The Vow with Channing Tatum and Rachel McAdams. We have Anna Torv, who's obviously um, known for Fringe, and um, Wes Bentley, who was in The Hunger Games. I believe he's been on a, f- a number of other things. Michelle Monaghan as well is in it. And... Yeah, I, I, do you know what? I enjoy... I think Ryan Murphy, um, you know, I think he came up with a good concept with Glee initially. It's not the show I don't think that it used to be. Um, I like what he's done with American Horror Story. I like the cast, so that's there. Robbie, any thoughts on that one? Um, I really wish I could have some. Um, yeah. That's it, a complete mate of that. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I mean, maybe it will be. I mean, obviously, we don't know for a lot of these shows until we see full castings and trailers and uh, and all that sort of thing. Um, number eight on our list comes from Showtime. It's a show called The Affair. Now, this has already been picked up the series, um, so it will be coming later in the year. Um, the the sh- the show itself, unsurprisingly, is um, it's an affair that has shows its effect on two marriages. Um, it doesn't sound anything great in terms of concept. 
Again, this is one where I really like the cast. We have Dominic West, who's um, I haven't seen on the TV since he did The Wire. I'm sure he's been in a couple of other things. Um, he was obviously McNulty, the main character there. We've got Ruth Wilson, who's recently been in Luther and the short lives that come saving me. Um, Joshua Jackson, also in there as well. Dawson's Creek. Um, but yeah, that's one that I, I, I'm looking forward to. Affair, the Affair, Molly, any thoughts? It sounds a lot like uh, the or Betrayal and Revenge, like those types of shows. Yeah, which doesn't doesn't bode well, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, when, when I'm going through all these, I mean, it was quite slim pickings. You can only tell so much from the, the taglines and the castings to date, but there wasn't a great deal that, that jumped out at me. Um, so the, the Affair, I, you know, I, I like the cast. It, it's on there. Um, this is a good one, Stuart. I'll come to you on this. Um, number seven on my list: Twelve Monkeys. They're making the. I assume you've seen the film. I haven't, but I've I've heard a lot about it. Yeah, um, Twelve Monkeys. Um, they're making a TV adaptation. It's coming from Sci-Fi. They've got um, the cast for it. They've got Aaron Stanford um, taking the lead role, um, who Nikita fans will know. He yeah. plays Seymour, and he's also an X-Men, I believe, as Pyro. I'm, oh, I'm right, sure yeah. it's the same oh, guy. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's taking the lead role in that. Um, a few other notable names. There's uh, Amanda Schull and oh, and um, Zelchko Ivanek, um, who's been in everything. Um, uh, Argo. Uh, oh, Argo. The, I know yeah, exactly who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's, he's one of those guys. Uh, I mean, off the top of my head, I know he's been recently being, uh, you know, Banshees and the, the Mob Doctor, as you say, Argo, uh, the event. The born thing, heroes, revolution. The, the guy, he's one of those actors where you look up his name and you, oh, it's that guy. Um, so he's in that, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to this. I enjoyed the film. I, I'm quite interested to see what they do with the TV a- adaptation of that. Um, okay, number six on my list is um, Line of Sight, which is coming from AMC. Um, now, a lot of my faith in this is partly because. I, I've really enjoyed what AMC have produced over the last few years. I think they've done some really strong shows. Um, they're very picky with what they take on, and I, and, and I like that. Um, line of sight, it stars David Morrissey, who Walking Dead fans will know as the governor. Mm. Um, he's taking the lead role in that. We also have um, Sarah Clark, who was Nina Myers in 24, and I believe she was also in the Twilight films. Um, a smaller role, Rennie. Um, I believe it's it's basically we've got David Morrissey who's a um, safety airline safety officer. Um, wait for it. He survives a mysterious plane crash. Um, <laughs> bring him on on a um, quest to discover the accident's cause. That's that's what we've been told so far. But I like David Morrissey. I like Sarah Clark. I like AMC. Um, line of sight is on my list at number six. Okay. Um, we're on to the top five now, and this is where I, I think the shows um, start getting a bit better. I think you can, um, I think it's easier to to separate the wheat from the good here. Number five is Sea of Fire. Robbie, I'll come to this one. I think you will enjoy the um, the premise of this show. Okay. Okay. Um, sea of Fire. This is um, we have three teenage girls who star in a porno film. Sounds like. Uh, you'll start to meet. Absolutely. <laughs> it it basically it tears her family apart. Uh, there's a disappearance, a murder, um, a whole host of other secrets. Um, it is coming to you on ABC. Um, it is a drama show. Um, it stars actually. It's got it's got a couple of good um, casting uh, leads so far. We've got Jennifer Carpenter, who was obviously Deb Morgan in Dexter. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming she's not playing one of the teenage girls. I'm not <laughs> sure she could pass for that anymore. Um, and no, um, so. Jack Davenport as well. It's one of the leads oh, who was yeah. He's been in lots of stuff recently. I think Smash. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah the yeah, director and Smash. Um, are you interested in seeing that, Robbie? Seal Fire. Um, I'll definitely check out the pilot. I mean, it seems a bit weird going on something like ABC. It seems like yeah. um, they're quite good for cutting out more of the stream stuff that goes on in it. But um, yeah. Anything for Jennifer Carpenter, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, I actually thought she had a really strong um, a final couple of seasons on Dexter. Yeah, definitely. Since uh, season seven, she was just probably one of the main reasons I actually watched it, if not the only. Yeah, I, I really hated her in the early seasons of Dexter. Yeah, I agree. I agree. 
all that whininess just got a little bit tedious. Yeah. Um, okay, next one, number four on my list um, is one again. Um, there's not much casting on this so far. In fact, you know, apologies, there's zero casting on this, but it is from Vince Gilligan, who's obviously. Breaking Bad. This is his next project. It's already been picked up to series. It's going to be on CBS. It's a drama show called Battle Creek. Um, we've got two detectives who have different um, world points of view. You've got one who's the um, the slacker, laid-back type of detective. You've got the other one who takes the job very seriously. Um, I, they, they, they basically, their job is to clean up the streets of Battle Creek which I believe is a town in Michigan. And um, it doesn't sound great from the tagline. Um, Molly, any thoughts on that? I'm hoping because Vince Gilligan's doing it in his project, I'm sure it, it can't be as bad as it sounds, right? Yeah, I think he'll definitely be able to make it good. And one of the it's one of those premises that we've seen a million times before, yeah. but it, so it'll rest on the characters. And I think given what he did with Breaking Bad, it's going to be pretty good, at least pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it was the same, you know, had the true detective um, premise been pitched to me, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't have been interested at all. But mm-hmm. all it all it took was you know a good a good station to pick it up, take some risks, some good casting, and it's you know a great show, um, and and I have every faith in Vince Gilligan to um, maybe not repeat the heights of Breaking Bad, but certainly put on a good effort. Yeah. Um, so yes, number four, Battle Creek. Um, looking forward to that one. Um, right onto the top three now, and um, the first one, Stuart. I'll come to you. You're a big fan of The Rock, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Give us. Have you got a rock impression? I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I can't do it. You, I can't do it justice. You, you know the line. If you smell, <laughs> what the rock is cooking. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tumbleweed. Yeah. I told you. Um, thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the shot there. Um, yes, the rock is coming to HBO. Um, and a new series um, called Ballers. Um, it's actually a show. He's he's involved in the production of it with Mark Wahlberg. It's taking a look at the life of athletes. Um, so we've got some active athletes. Um, it's it's all based in Miami. So we've got some active athletes, some retired, some coaches. Um, the Rock himself is starring in it. Uh, we also have um, Rob Cordray, um, who's been in a number of things. I think he's recently been in. Um, community and happy endings um, and Stuart what do you think of that are you happy to see The Rock it, it's meant to be a dramedy by the way it's not a one of those oh. cross things yeah I think I think it's, it's a decent it sounds like a decent fit for him I'm not exactly sure like, I, I'd need to see what his role exactly is yeah, in it but I'm assuming I think, a football player maybe yeah definitely he's, I, I like The Rock he's he's always he's got so much charisma just naturally and it's it's a good he's always funny. I always enjoy his roles even if the the projects aren't as as good as as I would hope. Like I'll I'll see anything as as long as it's not Michael Bay related with the rock in it. So Did you not once nominate The Rock in your top ten actors of all time? No, that wasn't me. That was I think that was Stuart. that was Stuart. <laughs> was I'm it? pretty sure that was Stuart. Yeah. No, he's not. He's, he's not <laughs> he's not in the top ten actors, let's let's not exaggerate. But in terms of entertainment I I'll always give him yeah. Benefit of the doubt. Is he the best ever wrestler that's um, moved to the the screen? Yeah, I think it, it depends. Personally, I prefer Stone Cold Steve Austin's. I think he's extremely underrated at what he does. But The Rock is more diverse and obviously hugely more successful. Yeah. But I think that's just because he wants to be more successful in that field rather than more talented. Necess- not necessarily, at least. Yeah, I, th- I think it could be interesting. I think it's, I think it could be something that could go along the sort of entourage vibe. Um, that that that's how I'm kind of seeing it at the moment. So interesting to see what they do with that. Um, so number three on the list there, Ballers. Number two is a show again that's been um, picked up by FX straight to series. So this one is definitely happening. Um, now it's written by um, Guillermo del Toro. Um, he's also done a lot of things. Um, have, you, have you heard of this one? It's called The Strain. Yeah, I've heard of it. it seems, it's actually got quite a good cast about it as well from what I've seen. It, it is, yeah. This is one where um, Del Toro actually 
created this story um, with the idea of pitching it as a TV show. Nobody wanted to take it on, so him and Chuck Hogan actually put it into a set of novels, I believe there's three, which ended up doing really well and getting a huge fan base. And then since then, they've actually been picked up to, um, FX have picked it up to go to series. Uh, we have, um, it's, I mean, the, the, the concept itself, um, you know, it sounds fine. You've got, there's, I'm sure there's some sort of biological threats um, to the country. You've got um, some survivors who create this sort of um, group that's mankind's only hope um, against a swarm of vampires. <laughs> Um, which is going to um, basically attack everything. The, the books are meant to be quite good. I've not read them. Um, cast so far is uh, we have Corey Stoll, who is known for he's been in the Bourne legacy films. He's also was in that um, the Owen Wilson film Midnight in Paris. Yeah, another one. Yeah, um, John Hurt's going to be in it. We've got um, Kevin Durand, who's who's been in loads of stuff. He was in Lost as Martin Kimi. Nah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he, he played the blob in the Wolverine Origins film. Yeah, that's right. He's also been in recently uh, Fruitvale Station. If anyone's caught that, Mortal Instruments. I am number four. He's, he's been in all nah. sorts. Again, one of those actors that you, you'll recognise. Um, oh, we, another good casting for this one, Mr. Frodo. Mr. Frodo. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Astin, Sam Wise Gamgee himself will be starring yeah. in this. Um, Aye, but is Ron Perlman in it? He always seems to tell me on Joel Del Toro stuff. Well, <laughs> yeah, very good point. Um, no, Ron Perlman hasn't been uh, hasn't been cast as yet. It, it wouldn't be surprising, but it's one that I think is interesting. I like Del Toro. Um, the you know I, I'm kind of put off. I was I was reading the concept for it and I thought, oh yeah, you know it looks okay, and then sort of swarm of vampires. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of. But I, you know the cast is good. FX will take a few risks. So anyone else looking forward to that at all? Yeah, I'd definitely give it a go. I mean, it does sound a little bit I Am Legend-ish with like, more people rather than just being isolated. But um, yeah, absolutely. For Del Toro being involved more than anything else. Yeah, it, it's one that I think will be fine. I think it will do uh, a decent enough job. Um, I, and it's one, as I say, that's already been picked up the series. So the the studios must have seen you know enough of that to you know for it to be to warrant the pickup. The um, last one, number one in my spot of most anticipated new shows, um, is one called The Money. And The Money comes from HBO. It's from David Milch, who is most notable for um, writing and uh, directing Deadwood. I don't know if there's any, any of your Deadwood fans. I've heard lots of good things about it. It's one of those shows that I've always wanted to try and get around to watching, but I just never seem to have the time. Yeah. Um, what we know of the story so far is not a lot. It basically it sort of focuses on the wealth and corruption um, among the super elite. Um, we've got some sort of huge American business mogul um, who you know has a lot of power and influence over the city and media. It does. It you know the the, the premise doesn't sound great so far. The cast I think is um, is very good so far. We've got Brendan Gleeson, who I always instantly think of him as Hamish in Braveheart. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. He's 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 been in loads. Uh, really, I think he's a really underrated actor as well. Um, yeah, Brendan Gleeson's going to be in it. We have um, Nathan Lane, who's um, recently been in The Good Wife, I believe he's known for, and Modern Family. Um, on, uh, sorry, Andrea Risborough, who was who's been in a couple of films recently. She was in Oblivion last year and The Shadow Dancer. Yeah, I know that. I was yeah. watching that yesterday. Yeah, a uh, very good film, Shadow Dancer. Uh, I thought she was pretty good as well. So she's going to be in this. We have Patrick Kennedy, who's been in lots of stuff, a lot of a lot of British stuff, Atonement, uh, War Horse, that kind of things. We yeah. have um, Sh- Robbie. Here's one you'll recognise, Dominique McElliot, who was Lily in Halo Wheels. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, she's going to be there. Um, mm-hmm. And we have uh, Rayleigh Otters in it as well. Uh, Mammy Gummer. Um, who I believe is Meryl Streep's daughter. Yep. And she was recently in Emily Owens MD. Yeah. Did you watch? Did you watch that? I did. I loved it. I was really mad when it got cancelled. Yeah. Were you surprised though? No. <laughs> yeah. So that that's coming um, to HBO. I I really like the cast. Of that um, I like the fact that David Milch is attached, who was um, very good at creating Deadwood, and that is my. 
um, top 10 shows are, that are um, hopefully coming up. Um, I'm quickly going to run through some other things um, because as I say there's hundreds of these pilot episodes in the works um, and I know we'll get some complaints that um, certain shows haven't been mentioned so I'm going to run through a few different notes I've got here. Um, I have 10 different things that I want to comment on. One, space. Space is a big in thing this year. I don't know whether it's because of gravity um, or, if, or if space is just cool again. We, we have a lot space of... Space is pi- always cool. Yeah, space is cool. Um, we, we've got a lot of uh, new pilot episodes set in space. There's one called Horizon. We have the, one called the, the brilliantly called Astronaut Wife's Club. <laughs> um, which, is, which unsurprisingly is, is focusing on uh, the wives of astronauts and how they cope with their partners being away. We have um, Extant, which is a um, astronaut pilot, which is starring Halle Berry. She's coming to TV, um, and we have a Mission Control one. Um, so space in thing this year. Um, second thing I want to say, um, Stuart, you will have an opinion on this. DC, I don't know if they're making some sort of huge um, effort to get involved in stuff, but we've got um, Constantine. We've got a, a pilot episode for that coming up. Um, they're trying to push that into a TV series. We have The Flash, which is spinning off from Arrow and getting its own show. I'm really yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. me too. And um, and and I've, with the Flash, they're keeping the same um, the same character, I believe. And yeah. I believe Felicity, um, Emily Bett Rickards, is going to be in both. Apparently, she's been touted for for appearing in both shows simultaneously. So, um, and we have Gotham. I was just going to yeah. say, um, I just found out on a screen wrap not long ago that um, Ben McKenzie's been cast as a commissioner as Ben Gordon. Yeah. That, that's I right, think, from the OC. Yeah, I, yep. that was, I love him in um, Southland and obviously the OC. Who can't love him from the OC? But yeah, absolutely chuffed with that. I'm definitely interested in seeing how that goes now. Yeah, so uh, D- yeah, D- DC are making a good um, push for some things. Um, number three on my list, worst title. We have a t- There's a TV pilot, believe it or not, and it's, it's called How to Get Away with Murder. <laughs> I, I just think that sounds awful it's uh, unsurprisingly it's a legal drama that looks awful i'll be amazed if it goes to air we have um possibly the coolest title uh, there's a pilot coming up called agent x um however upon reading the uh, premise for the show it's about a u.s female senator um a really sort of boring plot line but i thought the title was quite cool it was agent x it's, it's sharon stone actually stars in it um i thought that was the coolest title we have, um, oh, worst casting, right? Th- this is a name you won't be familiar with, Molly, thankfully, in America. The guys, <laughs> the, the guys here will. Uh, I want you to tell me what your opinions are of Jack Whitehall. I quite like Jack Whitehall. I don't... Oh, no <laughs> way, really? I, I, I say with trepidation, but I I think it, at times, it's, it's, from what I've seen of stand-up, it was all right, and he was in that, what was that? There was a comedy where it was like, Students living in a like a house together. Fresh meat. It's actually, he's actually Fresh quite meat, good that in that. The one. I quite liked him in that, but he needs to play like that posh university student. Yeah, that it does only seem, hates. he does only seem to have one kind of typecast role on him to be fair. I'd say. But... Yeah. Yeah, Jack Whitehall. Um, for those in America, fortunate enough not to. Have, uh, <laughs> I, I I think so anyway. He's a stand-up comedian in Britain. He's not a very funny one, I don't think. <laughs> Um, he has been in some UK series. He's coming to America in, in a sitcom, An American Education. Um, so look out for that one if it comes to, if it gets picked to air. Um, the most bizarre one, um, I've got, I've, I, I've put down here um, the most sort of bizarre sounding um, pilot episode that's in the works is actually one called uh, Horizon. Okay, now I touched on this in the space one. Um, it, it is linked to space. Um, but the, when I read the plot line for this, I just I, I just found it absolutely bizarre. Um, I'm just getting to my notes. Okay, we have here right. This is set during the height of World War Two. A secretary of the FBI discovers that her husband might have been killed in battle with a spaceship in the South Pacific. Obsessed with learning the truth, she becomes the only person standing between the Earth and an alien invasion. <laughs> yeah. It what just, are these concepts? Yeah, World War Two, space invasion. 
Um, and, and you know the funny thing is, this isn't even coming. This isn't you know an NBC show or a, a, you know a CW show even. This is this is coming from um, USA, who are normally pretty good with their. You know they don't often pick up a lot of crap. Um, I, I I think that well. might be. Yeah, um, spin-offs. Number seven, my list. Spin-offs a big thing this year. We have um, obviously we touched on it earlier. We've got the Flash. Um, Robbie, you were saying earlier about um, how much you enjoyed How I Met Your Mother. Mm-hmm. Oh, how God. I, how uh, I Met Your Dad is uh, coming. I, I heard about that. Please don't do it. Please, for the love of God, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> There'd be no castings yet, but that is being pitched. It's on its way. Um, Molly, here's one for you. Supernatural spin-off, The Tribes. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what that's going to be like. Yeah, are you keeping up with Supernatural? No, I'm not at all. <laughs> uh, I gave up. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Supernatural spin-off. There's an Oz spin-off. A um, couple other ones. It seems, you know, it, more and more of this uh, over these last few years. I think we've gained a whole lot of spin-offs. Um, mm-hmm. Finally, um, oh, th- again, Robbie, this is one for you. Number eight, I've got on my list is the most unoriginal casting of the pilot season. Okay, now last season we had a, a pilot, and it actually it went to series. It was on NBC. It was called Guys with Kids. Uh yeah. Right. <laughs> you um, remember the review? Yeah, this, this 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 was this was a pretty bad show. Now, um, Anthony Anderson um, starred in this show. Um, he was one of the the lead guys. And tell remind us, uh, Robbie, how good the show was and what what it was about. Um, if you imagine um, putting rusty needles into your eyes, I would still say that was more fun than Guys with Kids. <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 really was not good. Um, however, Anthony Anderson, who starred in that show, has been cast again in another sitcom, um, and it's about a guy that struggles to raise his kids um, and has to enlist the help of his friends, which is exactly what Guys with Kids was. Um, they've, they, they, they've just cast him in almost an identical pilot. Um, so it'll be interesting to see that. Um, I put number nine on my list is the most sort of um, trendy. We have a, a Sitcom coming to us called Selfie, <laughs> and, it's, uh, and it, it, it is absolutely what you think it is. It's about you women, me. yeah, women who's obsessed with taking selfies and and then how it affects her life. Um, Stuart, I know you're um, prone to a number of selfies. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm never off. I don't, my, I don't. My phone doesn't even have a front camera, so I can't even take selfies and see what they look like. Yeah. But uh, no, that why? why? Yeah. I was I was I thought you were gonna say like she takes a selfie and she's on murder in the back of it or something like <laughs> no, that. No, no, she just she she loves taking selfies. And, That'd be a good um, lesson. Don't take selfies because somebody might be getting yeah. killed. <laughs> yeah, um, and the, the show itself, you know, un, unimaginably is is called Selfie. Um, there's no casting for it yet, but um, hopefully that one doesn't get taken to series. Um, and the, the finally, the, the last one on my list, um, I have as the most misleading title. Um, we have a um, pilot episode coming to us called Tin Man. What? Now, what would you think that would be about? Like Wizard of Oz? Yeah, the Wizard Abs- of Oz. Absolutely, wouldn't you? It's got absolutely nothing to do with the Wizard of Oz. It's a psychological crime thriller set in the near future, focusing on a robot accused of first degree murder. What? <laughs> I robot Why? Mind. There you go. Um, so, Tin Man, um, possibly coming your way, is not what you think. With that in mind, um, okay, pilot season, upcoming shows, some of them are coming to you, some of them um, gladly won't be. Um, we will move on now to um, I just wanted to say, just yeah, before um, you went for it, um, you know, like American Gods was um, like stopped by HBO? Apparently yeah, got really picked good. up, and um, it's been picked up by something called Fremantle Media. Um, that's right. That's it's definitely the... coming. It's definitely getting back on it now. So quite encouraged by that. Yeah, really excited by that one. It's um, I, I've only read the first book. Um, sorry, only read the first half of of the book, and it was uh, really enjoying it so far. I think it's going to be a really great thing. I was disappointed HBO dropped it. Yeah, um, they were pla- they were planning on spending lots of money. Aye, on it. it was like about forty million a year they were planning on doing it. Apparently, yeah. like that. Well, I'm, I'm not sure it was forty million a year. <laughs> that's that, that's what I read. A, to be honest, a bit crazy. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been picked up uh, by a production company, Fremantle, which um, 
to be honest, I mean, most of the shows they carry, they're the ones who are behind American Idol, X Factor, um, you know, Neighbours, Home and Away, a whole bunch of, you know, sort of middle of the road um, soap operas and reality shows. Um, they're the ones that are going to be funding it, um, and I believe they're looking for a um, network to take it on. So I'm sure they'll find that. Um, okay, Stuart, do you want to take us through um, what's coming up this year in terms of superheroes and comic book stuff? All right. Well, I thought we'd start with you kind of. It's not been touched on like we touched on it last week with the the casting of like Lex Luthor and uh, mm. Alfred. But it's also been kind of assumed that The Rock is going to appear in it because he tweeted about him being Green Lantern. Do you know what would be really cool here if you did a Rock impression? No, <laughs> <laughs> that would be to- totally original, yeah. totally original and whatnot. But I, I think it's, I'm not sure because it was like it's, it reminded me of when Vin Diesel was tweeting and about him being, like, he was tweeting loads of Vision stuff, and then it turns out that he's going to do the voice of Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm not sure if The Rock's just doing it. I mean, he could just be doing it just to, to kind of annoy people and whatnot, but or maybe he has been told to try and do it to drum up interest, but it's kind of it's kind of weird, I hope. Yeah, who could, you, if, who could you see him playing? If Well, he would be playing... Uh, I think it's John Stewart who is like the, a Green Lantern that isn't Hal Jordan, and he is like he is African American, so that that would work for The Rock. But I'm not sure. I also I heard a while back that he was supposed to be playing Lobo, who's like a kind of I think he's like a kind of bounty hunter in the in the DC universe. I'm not too familiar with him, but I I think it would be good enough. He's but well, I I don't want to see him in Batman Superman because this film is big enough and clustered enough I'll say to, to be to put it nicely are, are DC struggling Stuart um, I think I think they are I think they are so desperate to try and get to where Marvel Marvel are like you can really taste the desperation do you, do you think they're trying to get there too fast they definitely they are they are absolutely trying to rush ahead and where Marvel had I think it was, they would have had five films before the Avengers took place DC are trying to get there in like two or three and it's too close to be. I think the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight trilogy, as as successful and great as they was, it's it's not helping them because they're too. It's too recent to really do a whole reboot of Super of Batman. It's a big, it's a big shadow it's casting over it as well. To be fair. Yeah, and just the the way it ended as well, you can't you can't continue. I don't think. Definitely. Like you can couldn't take Christian Bale and put him in this like new franchise with. This, this Superman and stuff, and I think, the, yeah, they're just they're just rushing it too much and introducing too many characters at at once, and not even in the way that Marvel have done it, where they'll have them turn up at the end. Like that's what that's what I would do. I would have I would have had Luther turn up in Man of Steel, and then you have Wonder Woman maybe turn up at the end of Batman Superman, and just kind of extend it a little bit just to just to introduce the characters a wee bit more and give them a bit of a backstory. Mm. We had a bit of a um, uh, debate last week on the Jesse Eisenberg casting as Lex Luthor. Um, I, I think I know your thoughts on this already, but can we just do a quick round table to everyone else's thoughts? Um, I, I Just to, to recap last week on the podcast, I, I, I thought it was a, an awful casting, um, which um, Liam agreed with and Stu um, thought could be quite a clever casting. I think it could work. I think it's, it's difficult because... He looks so young. Like I, I was so surprised that he's he's thirty years old as well as, as the same as Henry Cavill is. Wow. But he just he he looks really good for his age. <laughs> I'll say that <laughs> right now. I thought he was early twenties, maybe maybe mid twenties at a push. But I think I think it could work. It's it's a tough one because he is quite young and and Superman. I think he's he's traditionally quite like the same age as Batman. So there's definitely a weird kind of difference there mm. and but i think if he was i'm i'm, I'm struggling to think I, I think it could work like because you're you, he, you see him and now you see me and he plays that kind of arrogant well but he's not really i'm, I'm struggling to kind of put it into words yeah maybe, maybe robbie can um anything about shay ever seen him and I, I always think he's always carried himself pretty well and 
although it's just like the fact that he's too young, I think that's pretty much the only thing that's actually holding it back for that cast and ideal. I mean, even like, I think he's touched on saying like how he played Mark Zuckerberg in the social network. I thought he was really good in that as well, and I think a combination of the two put together. I think he, I actually think I'd give him the credit to say that he could pull it off, just to start the conversation a bit. Yeah, possibly. Any thoughts on that, Molly? Uh, I agree with you guys. I definitely think that he could pull it off, but I think people are getting hung up a little bit too much on the roles that he's already played. You know, I mean, other than the social network and Now You See Me, he's sort of played those awkward, very sort of Michael Sarah roles. And I think if yeah. he draws on the same type of character from the social network and Now You See Me, I think he could be a really great Lex Luthor. There we go. Um, sorry, Stuart, back to you. Uh, yeah, well, just I, I was going to mention that uh, Ben McKenzie has been cast as Commissioner Gordon, but I see we've, we've already mentioned that, and I, I think I think it could work. I think I've not seen a lot of Southland, but Southland. from brilliant. what I have seen, absolutely and brilliant. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've wanted to. It's just another one of those shows that I've just not had the time for. And the OC, the OCs, I I don't really really know if it's a guilty pleasure anymore because I hear <laughs> loads of people say that, but it's I, I've definitely seen a, a lot of that. Over the years, and it's speaking of the OC, what's uh, Misha Barton doing these days? Have you seen her in anything? <laughs> no. She turned up in How I Met Your Mother a couple of times, and then this season as well, like a flashback kind of thing. No, but you're thinking. Uh, far, far you're thinking of all actually. You're thinking. Uh, oh, also, I'm Rachel Wilson. Rachel That's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I've not seen Misha Barton in anything since the OC. I don't think. All <laughs> oh, right. Well, as for the for the films, I think. We'll start with like, Amazing Spider-Man 2, which comes out I assume in the summer. It would be the summer film. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I think there's a there's a lot they're trying to cram in, and with the the plans for them to make a Sinister Six film after, and then I heard a, a Venom film as well, or it would be it would be Agent Venom. I think it's it's interesting. I'm I, I'm hopeful for it because the first one was I really enjoyed the first one, and I think. You, Spider-Man is the character where you can bring in a lot of villains because he's always used to fighting multiple villains at the same time. And although it, it didn't really work for the third Spider-Man film of the previous trilogy, but I think, yeah, I think it'll work. There's a lot of a lot of good casting and Electro looks really good and the Rhino as well. And then they're sort of teasing people in the trailers and and maybe behind the scenes and stuff. I think I'm hopeful for that. It should be quite good. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this. I enjoyed the first Spider-Man film. I certainly enjoyed it more than the original Tobey Maguire ones. You know, although I'm comparing a trilogy there with with one film. Yeah. Um, I I I'm a lot more hopeful for the the new ones. And then moving moving on, they've got Captain America will be coming out. I think that's late, late in the year. No, I think it's May. Well, in the US, I think it's May. Oh yeah, it probably will be. We usually get them at around about the same time. It's like usually a, a couple of weeks before actually, which I I find interesting with the the comic book films. But yeah, I think that's that's an interesting one. I'm not a huge fan of of Captain America, but the first the first one was quite good. I liked I liked the Red Skull as and Hugo Weaving, and I think this one's it's it's getting the, it's 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 it could be all right. The Winter Soldier's it's an interesting character, and I like. I like what I've seen from the trailers so far. I'm really excited for it. Is that the trailer with uh, the captain in the lift? He's in the elevator yeah, with one. all the guys and kicks ass. Did you see the the full scene? I saw that when I went yeah. to see one of the films last year at, at Cineworld. They they showed like that full scene, which was quite cool. Yeah, I think it's it will tie in well. I think the Captain America story after the war is is it can be quite interesting with him trying to adjust to the modern life. And there's a there's potential for quite a lot of comedy, with him like finding like a mobile phone and being like, oh, what's this? And trying to work new technology. They used that quite well in the sixty years. They used that quite well in the Avengers movie, I have to say, just with um, stuff that he didn't understand. I think there was like a reference mm-hmm. to yeah. it. it was like, I got that. I got that. Sorry. Okay. It, how how old is the captain meant to be? So now that he's in present day, if you will, does he now age as normal? He does, it, but he's the super soldier. The super soldier serum keeps him young. That's like how. Oh, well, it's, it's, that's how they write it in the comic books. But then nobody really ages in the comic books, so mm-hmm. it's kind of difficult. But 
they they would write it that like that. He doesn't that slows down his aging a lot and it keeps him like durable basically. So he, I think he will just be kind of thirties, forties, but he obviously was frozen in the ice, so he's not aged since then. Do, is um. Is this the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., is that tying into this at all, do we know? It's supposed to. I would assume, yeah, it probably will. I'm not really sure. I've not... I, I, don't, I don't know whether Coulson's in it, because they're... I don't think he will be, because every time they've mentioned it in the the TV show, they, it's like nobody really knows that he exists. Like, I don't think the Avengers know that he's still alive. Yeah. So I'm not... I don't think he will turn up, but I would imagine Maria Hill will. Is Kobe Smothers or Smolders? I think she she'll probably have to turn up if it's all about Shield and stuff. That's right. Samuel Jackson will no doubt make a turn. Yeah, he's definitely there. Yeah. So I think that's I I've I've hopes for it, but I'm not not too excited because just because the character isn't isn't one of my favourites. But it's it's part of the universe, so obviously I'll be I'll be there opening day. Who who are you excited no. about this year, this summer, Stuart? What what other films are you excited about? <sighs> X Men, I I'm kind of excited for Days of Future Past. It comes out, I think that's coming out. That's definitely at the end of the year, and uh, it's it's a tough one. I'm not a huge fan of Brian Singer, and what he's done with the X Men universe so far isn't. It's it's kind of good, but it's not it's not what I want to see. But I think this film, it's a wee bit. Uh, it's it's got a lot to do in it. There's a lot of casting, and they're bringing like two whole films together and it could potentially be an absolute car wreck like it really could come together and not not work at all yeah. but i i hope hopefully it will did you enjoy did I you enjoy the last film the first class yeah yeah i really enjoyed that i thought that was a that was a really good yeah it was really good i think that's that was a uh, matthew vaughn i think that that really yeah. pushed that one and he did he did a good job but i don't think he's involved in the creative side as much. I think he's probably got an executive producer or, or a producer role in this one, but he's not he's not directing and I'm not sure if he's writing it at all. But I think it's it's an interesting story and I'm not i I'm not too I'm not too happy about them. They've changed it to make like Wolverine the centre focus of it. Like they have for pretty much the whole franchise. But I think it could work. It's it's an interesting story and I think I'm hopeful. Hopefully, it'll it'll come together quite nicely. Yeah, am I right in thinking uh, Peter Dinklage, um, who plays Tyrion in Game yeah. of Thrones, is he involved as well? He is. Yeah, he's he's playing uh, Bolivar Trask, who basically creates the the Sentinel robots. Ah, okay. So I'm um, yeah, he's definitely one that's that's in there that I'm looking forward to because as some I recently picked up Game of Thrones and I, I love him now. <laughs> with with such a huge cast though. The people aren't going to get a lot of screen time, are they, in this film? That's that's one of the things they've cut. Uh, they had to cut out uh, Rogue's part, who is Anna. What's her second name? Paquin. Anna Paquin. That's it. Yeah, they've she's she's been completely cut out of it. Like she's shorter scenes, but they're they're just not going to be in the film. So I, they'll probably end up in like the DVD or the Blu-ray extras or whatnot. But she's been she's been cut from it. So they've already had to make changes just to try and fit them all in, mm-hmm. which is. I think it it, it 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 could work on this one because they've already had their introductions, so they don't need to do a lot of storytelling for them. They're not introducing too many new characters to it. They're just kind of bringing them back and and tying them together. So it's really all about the storytelling more than the trying to introduce and build up characters, which is why it's that that could work. Whereas like Batman Superman might not work as well. Okay, well, what else is coming up? I think that's most of the films for this year. What about Guardians of the Galaxies this year, right? Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy, of course, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, is, that's, is, that's probably the one I'm. What about Ant Man? That's probably is that as well. This year? No, that's 2015. I think is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be next year. But I think Guardians of the Galaxy. I can't believe I've got that. That's probably the most excited one I've been because I've just recently got into the comics. They've started being written by one of my favourite writers, who's Brian Michael Bendis. For anyone that's into that sort of stuff, and he started writing some good stories in it and. I've picked that up and I'm I like the characters now and I think looking I had I wasn't really too well placed to comment before but I think I think the castings are are pretty good now. I've heard I've got a ma- I've, one of my friends is a massive fan of it and he's 
he wasn't too happy about some of them, but I think I think they'll work. I think Chris Pratt's a really good Peter Quill, mm-hmm. and a lot of them like uh, uh, Zoe Saldana. I think she'll she'll be good as uh, I can't remember her name now, but she'll be she'll be good as that. Stuart, and just for anyone who's um, who's <laughs> who's listening, who's not quite sure what Guardians of the Galaxy is about and how it ties into the or, yeah. Marvel universe, can you give us a quick uh, synopsis of, of what it's going to be about? They're just they're kind of they're a group of of aliens mostly. Uh, Peter Quill's a human, but he's born he's half human and half Star Lord, which is just like another race kind of thing. And they've just they're just kind of rogues. A lot of them have been like exiled from their places, or or they're running from the law or whatever. And they come together and they're just kind of going about the, the the galaxy, just fighting things. Tend to just float from one universe to the other. And there's a raccoon. <laughs> yeah, well, Brad, Bradley Cooper raccoon, will, yeah. will voice Rocket Raccoon, who is absolutely hilarious. He's going to steal the show, isn't he? I think he might, but I'm not I'm not sure how... I'm not sure how he'll sound. Like, I, I read an interview with Bradley Cooper, and he was talking about how he thinks it'll be like a Cockney accent, which I'm not I'm not too sure how it'll, how it'll come across on screen, but on, on paper, he's, he's very funny, and he's usually just coming about... He's, He's just throwing funny, funny lines out and cracking jokes quite a lot. And he has a, a nice wee catchphrase when he kills someone. He'll go blam murdered, <laughs> like every time. Is that what he says? Uh, if, yeah, wow. it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like him. So I think he could work. And as as a wrestling fan, I can't not mention Dave Batista playing Drax the Destroyer, which I, I'm not too sure about. The the only saving grace is that the character doesn't really do very much he's just kind of muscle so it it, it might work but Dave Batista's a terrible actor so yeah I, I was going to say that from any uh, I didn't watch wrestling when uh, Batista was in it originally um, so I, I can't comment on, on how he is but it, for any time I've seen him he does appear to be very sort of bland uh, not much to him but um, anyway that actually takes us on quite nicely to um, with coming off the comic book stuff that's come to film, we uh, Molly's now going to talk us through some TV and film adaptations um, and sort of uh, generate some thoughts on that. Is that right? Yep. Um, so this week in the US, Vampire Academy debuted. I don't know if you guys are getting this soon or not. I've not heard anything. I would be surprised um, if we get it soon anyway. We tend to be way behind on this sort of stuff. Okay, well, it's directed by Mark Waters, who directed Mean Girls, and it's, uh, I think it was produced by the guy who did Heathers, um, the 1990s film with Winona Ryder and Christian Slater. Uh, So it's being described as like a vampire movie meets Mean Girls, and I'm personally really excited for it, but I'm also kind of, I mean, I, I can't stand another vampire movie. I don't know if I can watch another vampire movie. Yeah, I was just going to ask that. Do you not think it, the vampire thing now in TV and film, it's, there's just so much of it. I mean, even when I was you know, talking through some of those pilots earlier on, there's just it's, you know, streams and streams of vampire stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed that the vampire stuff isn't doing very well. Like, Vampire Diaries isn't doing as well as the originals is doing. Uh, True Blood is on its way out. And Dracula, NBC's Dracula is not doing very well. Yeah. Did you watch any of that? I, I think I watched the first episode, and I, I think it was really, I thought it was really sort of dull. It wasn't yeah. my cup of tea at all. Yeah, I watched the I watched the pilot, and now NBC is going to do a Wolfman show, so I don't know what they're doing right now. Um, but another big release this year is Divergent, uh, which is like a young adult that. adaptation. Yeah, I'm... I read the books way back when they came out, and I'm really excited for that one. It's good. People are touting it as the new Hunger Games. That's a very big type. Yeah. Um, are, are the books good? Yeah, I love the books. Uh, the last one came out last summer, I think, or last fall. And it's it's a bit darker than the Hunger Games, so I don't know how they're going to adapt it to the screen. Well, but well, that's... What's it about, Divergent? Uh, it's <laughs> it's kind of it's one of those dystopian novels set in the future. Uh, it's set in post-apocalyptic Chicago, 
And it's this sort of self-enclosed society that's split up into five different factions, which represent different characteristics in people. So there's like people who always tell the truth, uh, people who are really kind, people who are really smart, um, people who are really selfless, and then people who are really brave. Um, so the main character, Tris, she transfers to the people who are really brave, and she discovers that there's like this underlying plot to destroy the society or like take over the society. It's um, it's it's a little bit like the Hunger Games, but sort of not as I don't know, not as like put a bunch of kids into a battle royale situation. Yeah, do you think it's targeted more an adult market, or is it still very much the the sort of teenager market is aiming for young adults? Yeah, it's definitely going to be get aimed at young adults. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, what do you what do you think of um, TV and, and, and film adaptations in general? I mean, I know we, we've got Robbie on as a guest this week. Who, um, for any of you know who who's read his things on the website, he was ma- massive Game of Thrones fan. Um, he did all our Game of Thrones reviews. Um, you know, it's obviously coming off these books, and I know that there's a lot of people. I, I know Robbie, you said you hadn't read the books. Yeah. Um, but I mean, do do you feel as if it's these kind of shows that are you know huge big sort of fantasy books co- coming onto TV and film? I mean, do you think that's kind of the the right direction? I mean, are TV creators just getting lazy, you know, and that's why they're 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 pulling all this stuff from novels? Um, I would say it's the direction to take for now. I think um, it seems to be definitely what everybody's buying into. I mean, the Hunger Games already. I think Harry Potter was obviously so successful that was. Um, but the Game of Thrones, I mean, yeah. I mean, definitely my favourite show by a mile. And I go out my way not to read the books mainly so I can enjoy it as a TV show as such. And I think when the day comes when it ends, I'll go back and actually read them so I can enjoy them both ways. Yeah. Um, I think that the TV adaptations tend to be a lot better than the movie adaptations just because they get more time. I mean, the Game of Thrones novels are huge. If they were to try and do a uh, just a movie of one of the books, <laughs> it would it would be awful. It would be absolutely awful. So I think uh, the TV shows that are adapted from books are a lot better in general than the movies just because they can give more time to the plot and the characters. That's right. I remember watching, I read the, uh, are you familiar with Percy Jackson? Yeah, I read those I, books this year. Yeah, I, I, I read the Percy Jackson books uh, before the films came out, and I, I quite enjoyed the books. I thought they were pretty good. And, yeah. uh, you know, even though I'm slightly too old for the where, where it's aimed at, I, I enjoyed <laughs> the books, uh, but I, I, I really didn't like the films. The, the, I think there's been two now. Um, didn't, didn't enjoy either of them. I didn't think it, it quite worked. Yeah. Well, the books are, I mean, when you read the books, they're the type of they're the type of novel that are really hard to adapt to the screen because they're kind of all over the place. They have a lot of short scenes that are really important, but then they also have like that overarching um, storyline that ties all the books together, which they didn't even touch on in the first movie, and then they had to bring it in in the second movie in order to like make it tie in with the first one. It was. I don't think that that series was done well, and I don't think they're going to continue it either. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very rare now when uh, films that that aren't adapted in some way, either before or after, into a book. I mean, I don't know about yourselves, but I, I've I've quite often walked into a bookstore and saw, uh, you know, a film that's recently been released. There's now a book version, and the book mm-hmm. has only been written because of the film. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and um, so I think it's, I think it's very rare now to find a, um, a film that's not in some way linked to a book. I mean, I think it's great. I I, I love the fact that it's you know getting people into reading. I think that's a, always a good thing. Um, but you know, it does worry me slightly that perhaps they aren't as creative as they used to be. Um, some of the the writers or producers. Um, it just it, it slightly concerns me that there, there's just one or two. Um, too many um, adaptations now. I'm not, I'm not sure it really sits right with me. Yeah. No, I... Have you guys heard of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries? It's a YouTube series based on Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. No, I've never heard that. Is it good? No, uh, yeah, it's good. It's like... Uh, it's a hundred episodes of like these six to ten minute things. It's it's good. It, may, it was really huge in the US. But they're releasing a book. So it's a book based on a web series based on a book. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's that's yeah, that's troubling to me too. Is that coming this year? Yeah, it's coming out in July. 
Oh, that'd be interesting. Who's starring in it? Any idea? Well, the web series was a bunch of unknown people because the way that they launched it, it's like a video diary, and it was like people weren't sure if it was just some girl doing like this weird video diary, but it's it turned out that it's like a whole production team. Uh, they're doing a new, they're currently running a new web series called Emma Approved, which is based on um, Emma. Yeah, so I think you know if, with that coming next year, I'm, I'm now going to put you on the spot, put you each on the spot with uh, a couple of questions regarding adaptations. We have Stuart. I'm gonna to come to you and ask you to name your favorite comic book slash superhero film that hasn't been adapted from a comic book. If that makes sense. A comic book film. Well, sorry, sorry. Like a superhero film that hasn't been adapted from comic books. Uh, I can't think of any superhero films that aren't comic books. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe. No, the only one I can think of is Hancock, and that was terrible. Is that the Will Smith thing? Uh, yeah, that was the Will Smith one. I, I thought just because of the nature of it, it's not really a. They tend to just take the character and and yeah. and go elsewhere because it's got notability. Is there some of them that go the other way? For instance, you know they they make a superhero film and then they base comics on it. If you see what I mean. Yeah, uh, I th- was, was Kickass. Think... Was Kickass always a? Co- no, Kickass was a comic book first. Yeah, yeah that was that's written by a Glaswegian guy. Uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. They tend to just go. They don't really go the other way. I've seen like comic books of of characters of like that they've made a film out of like that aren't superheroes. So like I've seen like Star Wars comic books and stuff. Yeah. But I've never seen a comic book written a, about a film that like a superhero film. Yeah. Okay. I'm afraid I I won't be able to answer that that's one. That's fine. <laughs> um, Robbie, I'm going to come to you and ask you what your favorite TV adaptation is from a book. Favorite TV adaptation. I want to say something that isn't Game of Thrones because it's it's too easy to say that. Um, um, come back to me on that one actually. I'll try and think. Okay, you 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 have a think, and while we're doing that, um, Molly will fill us in on her favorite book that hasn't been adapted to TV or film, and it that and that you think will would work quite well. Oh God. <laughs> I mean. I, I recently I've been reading a lot of well okay the selection is a novel it's a young adult novel sort of part of the post apocalyptic genre that spawned after the Hunger Games made it big uh, they did a pilot for it last season but it never got picked up for a series so I would love for that pilot to get picked up for a series do you think it do you think it would make quite a good show yeah it's um the the premise of the novel is sort of like it's sort of like a bachelorette set in a post-apocalyptic like country version of the u.s and i i think it would be perfect for tv like it sort of has that reality tv aspect to it but also like the hunger games type of thing i think it would be perfect and i don't know why it didn't get picked up okay and robbie have you thought of one yet um i mean i know that um justified and dexter were both um, TV adaptations originally, and oh, really? um, yeah, originally um, it was Dark Regime and Dexter, and I think um, Justified was uh, based on something called the uh, One Under the Water and Co or something like that. I can't remember specifically, but um, in terms of books that have actually been ad- adapted, I probably just, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd probably just stick with Game of Thrones because I think there's actually quite a lot there that's um, probably there for the taking. To be perfectly honest, um, I've always yeah. wanted something like Run and God Little. To be adapted. I always enjoyed that book when I was younger. I don't know if you ever read that. No, um, I've, I've, I've never read that. Yeah, it's quite some seconds actually. To be fair, at least for the one. Okay, doke. Um, on that note, I think um, I think we're done here. The one thing I want to um, ask you guys first of all, and to explain to our listeners um, from our previous co- podcast, what we've been doing is our intro, our theme music intro for every podcast. We base on something we've been talking about that episode. So, is there a theme tune that you want as the opening for this? Pick us a theme tune, Molly. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. I think that's the obvious one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking Game of Thrones as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a great intro, isn't it? Do you yeah, know what? It's yeah. one of those. It's one of those in- introductions that when you're watching it as well, because I'm already thinking it actually every season it moves story on screen yeah. as well. Like you get a different piece of the map. It changes mm-hmm. like maybe every three or four episodes, give or take. So yeah, it's, and I always end up watching it all the way through, like for the credit, just to see like what changes they are, regardless. 
There we go. S- settled then. We will have Game of Thrones as the introduction to this week's um, podcast. On a final note, I just want to um, ask our listeners to follow us on Twitter at um, at TV and Film Review, on Facebook at facebook.com slash TV and Film Review, um, Google Plus, you can find us at Plus TV and Film Review. I think you're getting the gist by now. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel um, by searching for TV and Film Reviews. I want to thank once again our um, contributors this week. Um, so give us a shout out to your own um, Twitter addresses. We've got Robbie. Hi, thanks for having me, guys. And your Twitter, um, Robbie? Uh, RobbieFuel89. And thanks to Stuart. Forehead7. Thank you for having me. I love it. And finally, from New York, Molly. Okay, it's at Molly Rocket, R O C K I T, and it's been fun. Yes, uh, and I've been Dave McGregor at Dave McGregor84, and we will see you next week. If you smell, what the rock is cooking. <laughs>